Hi guys, welcome to my channel. I'm Warhammer Dad. Uh, for those of you who are new to the channel, I do reviews, um, unboxings, um, modeling hints and tips, uh, painting guides and things like that. But I also do a lot of reviewing of the hatchet part works that GW have released, mostly because I want to. Uh, for those of you who previously watched the channel, I'm back. Uh, I've had a bit of a break due to uh, COVID and the fact that I'm a care worker and the fact that things were a little bit hairy. Fingers crossed they're calming down now. And I've come back just in time to start reviewing on the Imperium magazine. So, uh, well, let's get into it. <clears throat> As with most of the starting ones, <clears throat> you can see it's only $2.99. Um, unlike the Conquest starter, there's nowhere near as much in it, um, but it's still got quite a good haul. Um, <clears throat> before I stop taking the packets out of things, it's got a nice explanation on the back of what you're going to be doing, what you're going to be getting. <clears throat> it's going to have stuff to collect. It will be full of Warhammer lore. <clears throat> it's going to have stuff to build, paint and play. You're going to be able to play with this, although it is worth noting, um, if this runs to 80 issues, which is what they said it's going to run to, um, you may find that the uh, that the rules change shortly afterwards. That's happened with both the power, um, both the hatchet powers so far. Um, you got to the end of conquest, and they shifted from eighth to ninth, meaning you'd learn the old rule set. Uh, we haven't yet got uh, to the end of the current part work. Um, whose name I've completely... Real, Mortal Realms. Brain. Um, and already they're moving on to another rule set. So whilst it will teach you the basics, you may find that by the end of it, <sighs> you're having to learn another rule set. Um, hopefully that won't be the case. Hopefully this one will last a bit longer. In addition to that, from what I understand, ninth is massively different to eighth. There are a few important differences, so the basic principles will still be um, will still be accurate. All right, so let's uh, get into this and see what we've got. First off, we have a Space Marine Lieutenant by the looks of it. Um, for those of you familiar with the game, you'll know that. Space means are tragically, tragically short of primary lieutenants. Those of you who aren't familiar with the game, there are so many lieutenants out there. It just seems to be a thing they wanted to do a lot of. And we also have this Necron guy with a big gun. Um, both these guys are cool. Um, the plastic, as always, is fantastic quality. And the moulds are also pretty fantastic quality. Uh, the copper on these is 2020. Uh, that's most likely because this sprue. Oh, draw it. This sprue is the sprue you get with the um, with the start collecting magazine that you can buy in most Games Workshop and most independent retailers. The magazine itself goes for about ten pound. I've seen it go as low as seven. Um, <clears throat> so for two ninety nine, you're already saving yourself seven pound. It's only two models, but they are they are two great models to start with. Plus, it gives you the option of um, of buying this magazine and uh, splitting it straight away with a mate, um, which is probably the best way to buy this magazine unless you want both armies. It is going to do a combination of of, um, of the armies. You're going to get both the uh, Space Marines and the Necrons. If you choose to pay for the premium subscription, there's a bunch of other armies you can get. Um, those are limited amounts, but they're mostly the starter um boxes or the army boxes for those relevant armies you're still saving quite a bit of money with them as well um obviously you've got bases because you know you can't go anywhere without bases and d6 let's feel these not the best quality d6 but not the worst um jesus they're cursed I'm just going to show you this. Look, fucking cursed. Um, I'm never rolling those dice again. They are clearly cursed. Um, they can go in the bin. 
Uh, <laughs> fucking hell. <sighs> there is a rumor that uh, GW's white dice um, roll low. Uh, it used to be a rumor that one of the issues specifically had low rolling dice, which were referred to as the white dice of leadership, because whenever you were rolling leadership and needed to roll low, those are the ones you wanted to roll. I'm sure it was just a coincidence that these dice all, all rolled one and twos massively. Ooh, okay, bloody hell. Give me a second, guys. This is quite a beast. Oh, it's that snotty stuff. Mm. Okay, also, they sent these rulers. You. You used to be able to get these free from GWs, and a lot of independent retailers had a stack and they give away for free. Um, despite only being uh, 12 inches long, <coughs> they're pretty good. Um, for anybody wondering, uh, or who's new to the channel, I have Tourette's, the whole twitching thing, it's just ignore it, it'll go away eventually. <coughs> You'll need to get a, a proper tape measure eventually, obviously, to, me to measure some of the longer ranges and to measure weapon ranges. But particularly for movement ranges and aura, aura effects, these are fantastic because, as you can see, it's transparent. So you can place it over the top of a model and you can measure exactly from the edge of that model's base or the edge of the model and get some fairly simple measurements. <clears throat> Obviously, it only goes up to 12, but if you get yourself a cheapy little 125 tape measure from available from most... Uh, Arbor stores and cheap shops or a two pound one or whatever. That in combination with this should be all the measuring equipment you ever really need. Um, don't throw these away. Some people go, oh, they're rubbish, you just dump them. They are actually really useful, particularly for solving arguments because you can see it through them. So you can position yourself directly over the top and you can actually see exactly where the line goes. So those are a lovely and useful invention. And unlike the uh, previous whippy sticks, which you may or may not be aware of, they're not going to take somebody's eye out. Um, for those new guys, previous editions of GW came with um, red plastic sticks that were, ooh, I still think about 12 inches long, but they were incredibly whippy and you could hurt people with them. And uh, yeah, because we are mature adults playing with toy soldiers, we often did. Um, <laughs> okay. So we've got the magazine, I'm going to look at that in a minute. Um, you may, when opening a magazine, oh, little bump, notice that uh, the back comes apart. Don't worry, it's meant to do that. Um, the idea is that if you collect this, you're going to store it in a folder, you're going to take things apart, you're going to organise them. Um, so that you'll be able to reference everything section by section. Uh, that's a great way of doing it. And if you want to do that, more power to you. I don't because as I said, for the last two of the Hatchwork magazines, by the time I've got to the end of it and I've got like a full folder of it, the rules are win obsolete. <sighs> Therefore, the missions have are no longer quite r rhyming. You can still absolutely play them; they're a lot of fun. But um, I, I haven't. I'm not going to bother uh, <clears throat> dividing this one up particularly. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> the best thing to keep in these is always the law because. Yes, they retcon and change the law, but it's still cool and it's still stories. And <clears throat> GW's <clears throat> official position for a while, I don't know if it's still their official position, on the law has always been the, even though it's, it's retconned, <clears throat> they're not going to say whether the new version is actually the absolute truth or the old version is actually the absolute truth. They're just different truths and different stories told from different people's perceptions <clears throat> that have been passed on down through 10,000 years or more. So you don't really know which variant or version of the story is true. So even some of the fluff in the original um, <clears throat> first ed uh, magazines and books may still be true. And some of the fluff in the ninth ed books on the same stuff could be a lie. You don't know. So, yeah, <clears throat> that's just what came out. Make sure you don't miss out every week at your news agents. I'm sure other countries are getting that right. But you can give this to your news agent and say, please reserve every copy if you haven't already 
arranged that. I have because my news agent's quite good, although they've been struggling with um, delivery, deliveries recently because of Lloyd, the Lloyd rather problem. Um, if you do subscribe, I'm not subscribing, but if you do, there are extra bits you get. Um, before, if anybody's curious, the reason I'm not subscribing is I actually like to support my local news agents. They're a good little news agents and um, I want to keep them around. Um, in addition to that, if I were to subscribe and suddenly I had an emergency where I couldn't afford to do it, I, it'd be a hell of a thing not to subscribe, whereas my local news agents would keep it for me for a couple of weeks or even a month. Gives me flexibility because as the channel says, I am a dad and <laughs> I have kids. And as much as I love the game, um, I am legally obliged to say that I love my kids more. Mm. But if you um, subscribe, you've got um, some more bits and pieces, um, a modelling kit, there are Imperium binders, three with every third delivery. Or well, they do try and sell them in a lot of the local shops, but if you haven't paid for them, they're like eight or nine pounds, which is the cost of a standard um, copy of the magazine and it's not really a great buy for what is just a, a pretty ring binder. I can see why it's a pretty ring binder. I can see why you pay £8 for it, because it is very custom and very cool. But at the same time, you could spend that money on a model. But you get it free if you subscribe, and it's definitely worth free. Um, yep. <clears throat> what else? Uh... Yep, you get models, a brush paint set, a painting handle. The painting handles are actually quite good. They look good, but they're quite good. And some other stuff, um, some posters and that. So if you want to subscribe to the magazine, it's certainly worthwhile. If you want to go for the premium subscription, as I said, you've got, uh, we've got Chaos Space Marines, uh, Tyranids, Tau Empire and Orcs as four premium not quite armies, but certainly battle forces. You could use them as allies or you could use them as a core to build up an army. So um, those are extras you can get if you want to. Uh, again, because I'm not subscribing, I won't be, so I won't be reviewing those. But I'm sure there'll be a review somewhere. What have we got here? We've got Invasion of Ramesses. Ramesses, uh, Ram Ramesses, which is probably a Necron world. Um, one of the things about the Necrons is they are one of the big, big bads. Um, you don't tend to deal with Chaos more because they are another one of the big bads. Um, but you've got the Necrons and the Tyranids are currently kind of the meta bads that could just come and wipe out the entire universe in theory. Um, some beautiful artwork on this, some descriptions of what Rasmus is and some background. Uh, Imperial Task Force Ultramarines. So it's got a little bit of explanations about that. And you've got some lovely pictures of some lovely models there. Um, the bikes and the quads are really cool. I do want to get one of the quads and I do want some of the bikes. So I'm actually buying another quad at some point just because they're nifty. Um, although they do remind me of Mario Kart, uh, I have to admit. I am a big fan of, of the Primaris. Uh, not so much the Necrons, which is why Every time I get a Necron pack, I'll be doing a giveaway and I'll be giving away these Necrons. Um, and I'll be doing that at the end of the end of this episode as well. Uh, ooh. You've got a mini map, and this again is stand for most of the first most of the first issues. Uh, the later issues tend to come with bigger maps, but these allow you to basically run some initial battles. <laughs> and cover the basic rules um, even when they're gone even when you're not using it anymore do keep hold of them because in some cases you may find there are missions that use those on top of them in others <clears throat> well if we look at the necron side that doesn't have anything on it it's just pretty artwork you know it makes an ideal poster an ideal background an ideal background for taking photos of models or uh, or anything really <clears throat> What else we got? 
Okay, that's the bump that comes with it. Um, uh, oh, no, we've got this last bump before we get into the magazine proper. We've got a giant folder. However, it is also a giant oh, poster. It is also a sales thing and a description of what is going on. <laughs> I'll look at this with you guys. As you can see, you've got some pictures. You've got a description there of what the Imperium magazine is. Uh, telling you, again, telling you what you get for subscribing, what you get for your premier subscription. <clears throat> then finally it dies in a bit more to what it is. And here is, I think, the bit that we're all really interested in. That is what you'll get by the end of it. So if you collect every issue, and hopefully you'll be able to, hopefully these are the pandemic and the other lorry driver issues um, will get resolved. And if we quickly look through it, you've got a lot of scenery. Um, if you've collected the previous part works, you already have some of this scenery, but there is also some different scenery. And um, you can't have too much scenery. If you have already collected part works and this gives you a uh, lot of duplicates. Um, I thoroughly recommend either going to your local gaming club or even possibly your uh, friendly local gaming store and donating it to, to those. A lot of gaming clubs are run in schools. They have limited budgets um, and it's important for the next generation. So if you've got, if there's any of this stuff that like me, you already have multiples of because some of it came in the previous one, check with your local school, see if they've got a warmer club, check with them. Um, you know, check with your local um, clubs, see if they've got enough scenery. Yeah, if you don't want it, there is always going to be somebody that does. Um, and if, like me, you're just collecting one of the armies, either take this as an opportunity to get a mate into it, which is your best thing, or there's always the Bay of E. Um, people will quite happily buy this stuff off you. Um, you probably won't make massive profits doing that because, well, all this is being sold cut price and if people are really desperate, they go out and buy the individual issues. But there's always something you can do with the bits that you may not want. Okay, so now let's just dive into the magazine proper and see what, see what it's telling us. We've got um, an intro here, signed by Ian. Um, obviously an amazing man and a god of a man, otherwise he wouldn't be in the inside case of this. <clears throat> Those are familiar, I always joke about Ian, but I have no idea who he is. Um, <laughs> I'm sure he's a lovely guy. Um, <clears throat> it has the addresses for the um, Hatchet services. They're not that good at getting back issues. Um, if you miss parts but they're not absolutely impossible either so if you miss a magazine you can contact these guys and try and get hold of it um, it may or may not be effective is basically the imprints I've gotten from various Facebook pages from we've missed magazines which, uh, again, that's another thing. If you get an issue that you have no interest in, there are other people out there who will have interest in it. <clears throat> so you don't have to collect both armies. You can get away with just collecting one if it's just the armies you're in for. Um, but that's up to you guys. Um, we, we've got a bit here on the Primaris Lieutenant Veteran Space Marine Officer. You can tell he's a veteran because of that big goldy thing there which is what's called an iron halo, which also I believe gives him a save. Um, I'm just gonna read some of the quick bump, we're gonna go through everything. Um, Space Marine Lieutenants are key members of each chapter's command structure. Each Lieutenant is an expert tactician and strategist, as well as an experienced and skilled warrior. They can be found wherever the fighting is thickest and the Ogrins are thicker. Bellowing orders, I did that last bit, and directing the fire of their battle brothers, which is pretty cool. 
Um, you can see this guy's got a plasma pistol. Is that a plasma pistol? No, it's a Neo, Vol Neo Volkite pistol. Um, it fires rays of heat. So it's basically a melter. <coughs> um, a lot of them, are, a lot of the lieutenants have odd weapons. <sighs> There's nothing you stopping you re-equipping them more effectively, or more in line with your troops, or you can keep the weapons. They are always cool. It's always a consideration um, with lieutenants what they're going to be doing. Uh, if you're having them with units, it's, it can sometimes be a good idea to make sure that whatever they're using at least has the same range as the unit you're using. Because <clears throat> if you've got a lieutenant providing extra stuff for your heavy weapons at the back, because you think that's tactically worthwhile, and he's got a pistol, you've just paid for something that's essentially worthless because he's, ne he's well, hardly ever going to use it. And when he does, it's going to be one or two shots. So often thinking through your equipment is a good idea. I mean, this guy's fairly going to be, this guy's going to be fairly solid in hand to hand. He doesn't have the heavy armor, but he does have a lovely shield and a melter, which in close range combat is really not bad. Um, we've got another bit of bump. Um, this guy, well, actually this guy is a blade guard veteran. The Lieutenant's Master Crafty Weapons Heraldry and Storm Shield show that he once served as a Blade Guard veteran, an elite unit of the Space Marines. Um, <clears throat> every, um, because Space Marines are more based on the idea of heroes than military, and if you want military, go look at Imperial Guard, um, <clears throat> they're much more warrior-ish, so you know, every commander has his companions, his Blade Guard that hang around with him. Um, and uh, <clears throat> these guys often go on to serve as lieutenants or commanders in their own right. One of the reasons that he has these guys hanging around with him is so that they can see and learn from what he does and his mistakes. Um, some of them are called Blade Guard. Um, in Space Marines, they're called Wolf Guard. Um, in, Blood, in Blood Angels, I don't know what they're called. I'm going to guess Blood Guard because GW has a very solid naming um, regime, but if they're not, please post it in the comments and let me know. Um, we've got a nice little spoken bit here, which you can imagine spoken in a voice if you want. Um, <clears throat> How dare the Necron filth despoil the Emperor's realm with their foul presence? <clears throat> Intercessors, fire at will! They always say that. I always wonder who Will is and what he did to deserve it. Um... There you go. It continues on going, Assault intercessors, strike their left flank. Play guard veterans on me. Sounds a bit kinky. <clears throat> Let us break their lines and crush them to dust. <clears throat> Courage and honour, brothers, for Gilliman and McCrag. And then he'll charge off and probably get killed because in the bump, Marines are basically unkillable and immortal machines. On the tabletop, not so much. But that's supposed to give you an idea of what uh, what they're like. Um, this is the magazine is probably almost always going to base um, the characters on Ultramarines because Ultramarines are the basic vanilla core Space Marines, and therefore GW's big one. Well, yeah, one of their biggest sellers. A lot of people like the weirder Marines. I play Space Wolves. Um, some people swear by Blood Angels, but almost everything. In, in the basic um, GW pack, um, it's all pushed as Ultramarines or Ultramarine adjacent. It usually takes very little effort to transfer them over. Um, some of them are obviously going to be more difficult than others. This guy has very little specific heraldry. <clears throat> so it would not take much at all to make him a Blood Angel or a Dark Angel, um, maybe a little bit more to make him a Space Wolf, but one of the core principles, uh, core principles of GW's marketing, GW's marketing tactics, sorry, is that uh, their core army, their main thing they push, which is the Space Marines, actually serves as the basis for four or five different armies. Now, the Necrons, You'll have different strategies, different things you can do, different houses and that, which allow you to do changes and bits and pieces like that. 
um, because all the other things have a similar concept behind them, but none of them take it to the um, extent that GW, uh, GW Space Marines do. Um, Space Wolves run very differently to Ultramarines, as the Dark Angels, as to Blood Angels, as to White Scars, etc, etc. <clears throat> Whereas a lot of the time, yeah, and within each of those, you can run different ways. You can run Dark Angels as a fast force. You can run Space Wolves as a heavy sit-down force. Um, <clears throat> you can run Dark Angels as a heavy sit-down force. You can run Space Wolves as a fast force. They all have their own strengths and weaknesses, but you have a lot of time to adapt to them. So that's pretty cool. <clears throat> but <clears throat> everything they have here is almost always going to be Ultramarines because that's their core. But you don't have to stick to that. There is nothing that locks you in except a few details and a few models which can either be covered up with green stuff or carved off or replaced. Particularly if you're collecting other models, often the extra kits can be easily replaced. We've got a battle record here, which is the war gear details. As you can see, whilst it has pictures of it, it's not filled in, so you can uh, fill them in as other things and use them as, as other things. There is a rule in GW called WYSIWYG. I don't know if it's a rule in Ninth Ed because I haven't seen it. Most because I haven't a chance to get out and play Ninth Ed and um, I haven't really familiarised myself with the game properly because I can read it, but playing is what tends to get in my head. <clears throat> um, WYSIWYG stands for what you see is what you get. <clears throat> the um, the general idea is if you sculpt a model and build a model, it should have what it looks like it has because that makes it an easy reference for the other player. However, particularly with smaller groups and individual heroes, running them with different loadouts is fair, it is much more standard um, and most people will accept it, particularly if you're just starting and you want to try stuff out. So that's why this is blank. <laughs> you can write directly on this. You can photocopy it. Um, I'm sure if you look online, there are forms you can print out. <clears throat> and GW has army builders and lots of things like that. So that's all cool. Apparently his name is Lieutenant, which um, is very, very foresightful of his mum and dad. He <clears throat> has, has a name D6 chart, which is fantastic. Uh, you can roll a D6 and randomly pick a name and randomly pick a title like Marco Sextus. The Lion of Vespital, or you can roll Cag uh, Castus Ignus and pair that with the Knight of um, Eax, whatever you want. Or you can just make something up, but that's that's pretty cool. <clears throat> GW have been paying attention to a lot of cool details in the previous few editions. There's always going to be people who scream, oh, I hate it. Usually that's because their favourite rule has been changed and often you'll find that their favourite rule needed changing. Next, you've got the Royal Warden, a noble commander. <clears throat> Let's have a look. <clears throat> Royal Wardens are Necron nobles who act as battlefield commanders. Though they are utterly loyal to their superiors, they have independent thought and are capable of adjusting strategy to their warriors, oh, of their warriors to ensure victory. <clears throat> little back uh, history on the Necrons, or little background. A lot of, they were originally mortal creatures. <sighs> Well, they transfer themselves to immortal bodies <clears throat> and that process was not done in an egalitarian way um the nobles got all their consciences put through and the plebs are uh, little more than machines they are capable of thought and decision and learning but their personalities and their souls are gone whereas the nobles whilst their souls are gone their personalities still exist or rather, their souls have gone to an extent. Yeah, their personalities still exist. <clears throat> Depending on how noble you are, often depends on how much view is left. The higher nobles being nearly complete, and the um, lower levels missing gaps. And every time you die, there's a risk you might lose more of your memory. So whilst Necrons are often fearless, their leaders tend to preserve their own lives. Which, yeah, <clears throat> is a thing. Um, dum, 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 dum. If 
unfortunately they haven't got a voice bit but it goes through a lot of the bits and pieces like the command node um that's how they communicate <clears throat> and um each dynasty bit on necron ability uh, um, each dynasty is ruled over by a single high-ranking noble this ruler is surrounded by a royal court made of lesser nobles who command their legions royal wardens are lieutenants and act as bodyguards for their superiors higher ranking <clears throat> Sorry, higher ranking Necron nobles have their own personalities and are ambitious and ruthless. It also says they're not beyond plotting against their superiors. No ranking nobles are kept loyal by command protocols deep in their brains. So the higher you are, the more freedom you have. Um, the lower you are, the more you're controlled. And again. You got all these blank sheets which you can scan, take a photo of, or copy in some way, or there's probably uh, plenty available online. I would imagine if you checked out their website, the GW website, there will be similar things available for a short period at least. There were with the uh, last run. Then it runs on Space Marines. Um, this guy's a Blood Angel, or at least he looks like a Blood Angel. <clears throat> could be a Flash Terror, could be something else. <clears throat> But um, it runs a brief description of the Space Marines. Uh, the Adeptus Astartes, which means Adepts of, of the Space or Space Marines, <coughs> known by most of the Space Marines, are one of mankind's most powerful fighting forces. <coughs> they have defeated the Imperium with courage and honour for thousands of years, inflicting terrible defeats on humanity's foes. This is true. They're pretty awesome compared to normal humans, um, comparing them to some of the Xenos. They're not quite as awesome, but they can hold their own. Um, the reason they haven't, in many cases, is because space moons have limited numbers. And they can only reproduce in certain ways. With the exception of Primaris, who have extra ways of reproducing, they can do it the standard way, and they can also be created by the Adeptus Mechanicus in specific uh, in specific call. Um, and there's a difference between the two space marines, but rules-wise, from what I understand, they're functionally the same now. I say from what I understand because I only collect the Primaris. I've read the rules for the new, for the old ones in eighth ed and um, and ninth ed, and I'm sure they are the same. But someone will probably point out a difference that I missed. As I say, I learn much better through playing. <coughs> And you've got the Masters of Mankind. It's basically going through the basic the basic law. <clears throat> the Masters of Mankind consist of the Emperor, who is at this point a corpse sitting on the throne, and one of his primarchs called Robu sorry, Rabute Gilliman. That for years there was it, you know, debate, is it Robert? Is it Robert? Is it Robot? Is it Robout? I don't think anyone went Rabute. But apparently that's how it's pronounced. He... Yeah. The Primarch created a bunch of genetically engineered sons who were basically demigods to his near godhood. <clears throat> some of them betrayed him. Some of them stayed loyal. Most of the loyal ones have either died or been cast out and tend to have some kind of Arthurian feel legend about them. You know, this warrior was once amazing and we'll come back when we need him and we'll save us all and yay! The only one to come back so far is Gilliman. Um, there are other Primarchs who have become demons because they turn to evil <sighs> or freedom, depending on what you think. Um, <clears throat> there's a lot of speculation as, as to which Primarch will become will be coming back next. Um, there are 1,000 chapters, um, which is not true. There are definitely more than 1,000 chapters. <clears throat> um, you will find that there's a lot of bump about how there's 1,000 Space Marines a chapter and 1,000 chapters, giving you 10,000 warriors. Um, there are well more than that. Um, and the chapters... <clears throat> I once calculated how many Ultramarines there actually were in a chapter based on one of their chapter organization charts. 
and I got to just over 1400. Um, and that was in the Ultramarine Legion, which is supposed to be the main Legion. Um, I did that by including drivers, uh, pilots, the extra guys that you always get, the command squads, the leaders, and all the guys that advise them, and all the extra guys that have little jobs and that, and the dreadnoughts, which may all be ca will be counted as supernumeraries, but certainly are still space marines. Some chapters, like the Back Templars, have multiple crusades going on with thousands of marines on each crusade because they're moving around, they keep it secret. Some chapters, like the Space Wolves, ignored the whole, you have a thousand marines from the start. The Space Wolves, because of their tactics and, and because of the necessity of taking only people from their home world, because of a thing called the Canis Helix, were always one of the smaller ones, estimated to be about three or 4,000 people big. <clears throat> Although, and, yep, yeah, and um, didn't have any chapters that um, came from them, um, because that's, each chapter has, each chapter has sub-chapters. When they get too big, they kind of divide. One chapter keeps the original name, another chapter calls themselves, <clears throat> I don't know, you have the Ultramarines and you have the Omega Marines, is one example. Um, the Dark Angels and the Blades of Vengeance. <clears throat> and until recently, the Space Wolves weren't able to do that, is one of the things in their fluff. Um, yeah, but with the Primaris, they now have the Wolf Brothers, who, who um, are pretty cool, but also an exclusively Primaris unit. So um, take a lot of this with a pinch of salt, as I said earlier. It's, it's the fluff, but even GW doesn't necessarily hold to that fluff. Because it, yeah, a lot of it's like this is how you're supposed to run it. It's not how you actually need to run it. But yeah, it says here one thousand chapters. Uh, Space Marines are organised into forces known as chapters. Some of these chapters are permanently based on fleets and starships, while others have their own homeworlds <coughs> or planetary fiefdoms, um, or some like the uh, Ultramarines actually have a tiny mini empire. Um, you'll find each Space Marine chapter seems to specialise in something. Building and maintaining empires is very much what the Ultramarines seem to specialise in. Um, and to that end, they're very much based on the Romans. So, yeah, which is pretty cool. In a certain slavey, vicious way. Um, <clears throat> in addition, they have their own heraldry, history and methods of making war. There are believed to be 1,000 Space Marine chapters, each made up of approximately 1,000 Space Marines. If this were proven to would be true, it would mean only one Space Marine exists for every populated planet on the Imperium. It's utterly not true, particularly with the Primaris coming out, because there were 10 prim there were 10,000 Primaris to begin with, and that would be... Let's see, if we divide 10,000 into... <sighs> into a thousand that's like 10 chapters at least weird i almost couldn't do the math for a second there so that's 10 extra chapters just with the initial wave of primaris so if they're already a thousand it would be a thousand and ten um there were more primaris coming out bolstering chapters being divided so even if the original Space Marines had stuck to that, which they didn't. There'd be 11,000 <laughs> Space Yeah, there'd be, yeah, 1,010 Space Marine chapters now, or whatever. <sighs> yes, a thousand times a thousand. <sighs> is more than that. <sighs> but, um, yeah, if you actually start breaking down... Oops, sorry breaking down the numbers of Space Marine chapters just in the known stuff, you start looking and going, okay, in order for certain facts to be true, there has to be more than 10,000, for example, again. And this is an old fact, but in one of the Ultramarine books, it stated that they were 99% of the Space Marines, which meant all the... So they, were nine, they provided 99% of the Space Marines, which meant all the other Space Marines... No, sorry, 90%. All the other Space Marine chapters 
and their successor chapters combined could only make up 10%. And when you start adding them up, it's like, well, there's more there already. Because, you know, obviously 10% of a thousand is a hundred. That's right, isn't it? So if there are a thousand chapters, there's already easily a hundred chapters out there that are randomly mentioned because GW has been going for 80, oh, sorry for my phrase, because GW feels like it, GW has been going since the 70s and 80s. There's There are hundreds of chapters and a lot of them are assigned already to different chapters and they keep adding chapters all the time. Um, Even though, and even though some of them do die out, a lot of them haven't. You know, you look at this and you go, mm, there's got to be at least 10,000. Um, yeah, there's 10 Dark Angel chapters, so that's 10,000 people right there. No, there's at least 10. And it just gets, it gets, it gets above the numbers pretty quick. But that's why you'll see today, it's like, if it's to be believed. Okay, what else do we have? We have an intro to the Necrons as well. Just going to read the little bump bits. Um, For 60 million years, the Necrons have slumbered as they have lain dormant. The stars have moved through the heavens and countless empires have risen and fallen to ruin. <laughs> always do dramatic accents. I always think maybe I should do like a farmer accent. Now the Necron race stirs through its long slumber, my lover. Intent on reclaiming the galaxy and eradicating all who stand before him. I reckon Necrons from Dorset would work. But anyway, <coughs> the Necrons are pretty cool. As it tells you, they are from eons beyond anybody else. They are, in fact, the second oldest race in the galaxy, having successfully, maybe third, having successfully destroyed the first oldest race. Um, you've got the Necron tier. There's very few pictures of the Necron tier. They kind of look a bit cow like, but with things on the side of their head. But it, it gives you the basic thing. The Necrons are not always soulless androids. Once they were the Necron tier, a race obsessed with death. Having started the war they could not win, they bargained with ancient star gods and were granted robotic immortality exchange, in exchange for their souls. So that's pretty cool. <clears throat> the Star Gods were beings called, uh, called the Catan, who are basically these sort of ancient, nebulous, gaseous beings that would eat on entire, st that would feed on stars. But it turns out that souls are a bit like candy, <clears throat> in that they, in that you know, <clears throat> they're not necessarily as good for them, but they're nommy nommy, and when they convince the Necrons. To transfer into the bodies, they nommy nommied on their souls. And um, the Necrons were sad about that. Next, you've got the Silent King. Um, who's, there's a picture of a the guy there, but I think that's just one of his guardians. The Silent King was basically the ruler, the ruler of the Necrons when this happened. Um, he got tricked, but he also took a big measure of revenge. He then disappeared off into the stars for millions of years and has recently come back to take charge and or rather to help his people or push them forward <clears throat> he used to have protocols in all the other Necrons that made them loyal to him but apparently he shut them down before he left he got uh, erased them to give his people their freedom <clears throat> um, I'll just read their bump um, the Silent Kings were rulers of the Necron tier after their transformation to, into metallic immortals the last of the Silent Kings and I'll, this is going to be a bad pronunciation. Zarek ordered the Necrons to retreat into their stasis crypts where they would slumber until the time is right to rise up and conquer the galaxy. Zarek, meanwhile, took his starship into the intergalactic void and was not heard of for millions of years. For millions of years. Now he has returned and intends to reunite the race by seeking out each and every Necron density that remains and bringing them under his control. <clears throat> There's a lot of... Uh, Guessing as to what that's about, some people reckon 
he saw the uh, <clears throat> he saw the Tyranids and realised there would be nothing left to rule. <clears throat> or realised they might actually be a threat. Um, other people say he saw something else. Other people say he's seen chaos. Sorry. He's seen chaos and wants to stop chaos because he, you know, Necrons exist purely on the material plane. They don't like the material particularly that much. And if the whole galaxy gets devoured, it may mess up their plans. <coughs> um, same with the Catan. They are purely corporeal beings. They have no souls. Apparently, it's one of, they're one of the few things in the universe that the Chaos Gods fear because they can't touch them. You know... Um, And the Catan and the Necron could then decide to wipe out all life themselves, leaving the Chaos Gods starved and dead. Next, will be your basic how to build. Um, there's a little bit on clipper safety. Do be careful. I once saw a man slip with some clippers and decapitate his entire arm. That may or may not have happened. They're fairly basic. These guys are what you call single pose miniatures. So they're, there's a little wiggle room, but for the most part they go together in one position. As you can see on here, there are bits you can swap in and swap out. For example, I intend to swap out the head for a Space Marine head. I intend to swap out the pistol for a, for a sword and, and add some Space Marine. That was things said. I intend to swap out the head for a Space Wolf head and maybe swap out the weapons just because I play Space Wolves. Well, actually, I play Wolf Spear, but still Space Wolves. And um, have no interest in playing ultra ultramarines. <sighs> Not that they're bad; they're cool. It's just the walls that speak to me. And again, you got the instructions on how to build the um, <clears throat> Royal Warden. <clears throat> now these models are delicate, <clears throat> but the Royal Warden is the most delicate. So when you're be building him, be careful. Use clippers. If something doesn't fit. Don't try and force it. If something needs to connect between two bits and it doesn't fit, like that bit there, <clears throat> you've got a bit of bend. But if you really, really need to make it um, fit, then hot water is your friend. Get a bit of hot water, about a cup of tea hot. <sighs> Dip it in there for a little while and it will allow you to bend it. If you try and force a lot of these delicate bits, you'll just snap them. Oh, and if you are collecting Necrons, get a way to transport them that protects them. Because again, the thinner models are much more vulnerable. And there's very little worse than arriving to a tournament and having to spend half an hour building your army again. Actually, that's not true. There's a shit ton worse than that, as we have discovered over the past year or two. But it is inconvenient and often quite disheartening because not only does gluing them back together not tend to hold them as strongly, so you tend to end up gluing them a lot, wrecks your paint job because the plastic glue is actually corrosive, particularly to paint. Next we've got how to paint. Um, this is another part of the book where I said some books will come obsolete, other books you can keep forever. The how to paint, the how to paint guides are pretty fantastic. Um, they're very good at um, teaching you how to paint. You may not need them after a few years, particularly after you finish the collection, if you're painting the whole time. But again, there's something you can donate to your to your friendly local gaming store or or to your local gaming club, particularly if it's uh, or particularly your local school gaming clubs. So they're actually uh, they're actually worth keeping. It also explains the, um, yeah. this one explains basically the Citadel colour system, and that's it. It doesn't give you at any actual painting tips, which is weird, even the GW. But basically, um, those painting tips will probably come in, um, will probably come in the next issue. The way the colour system works is actually quite simple. You have what are called base paints. They're, they tend to be quite thick. And uh, you will probably want to water them down a little bit. A 
I tend to find about a third water to two third paints works for me. But I use a wet palette. Some people say two thirds water to a third paint, others say half and half. Really what you want to do is experiment and see what you like, what makes sense to you. Um, but they're the paint that are initially paints over it and they're better at gripping to plastic. Um, spray paints are really good. Um, if you've never used spray paints before, get cut the model. You, know, well, you will have already cut the model out of the sprue. Don't splow, throw away the sprue. Spray paint the sprue because you'll see how things pull up, how they can fur up if you get it wrong and how they can obscure details so you'll know how to do it to the model. That's actually a good tip as well. If you get a new spray paint that you haven't tried before, <clears throat> obviously not the same colours, you know, red and black will spray paint the same, metallics will spray paint differently, and spray paints from different companies, particularly the cheap, particularly the cheaper ones, will spray paint differently. That doesn't mean you can't use them, but always try anything new out first before you spray it on a model that you've just paid 10, 15, 100 pounds for. And if you're new to GW, there are models worth £100. If you uh, look at their site Forgeworld, there are models worth thousands of pounds. I always imagine someone dropping them. <clears throat> I would be sad if I did that. I have, I have a friend who in the 90s had the Thunderhawk gunship, which is a fantastic model. But it was an old, no, not the nineties, the noughties. <clears throat> it was one of the older models. And one of the other friends went, this is amazing, and promptly dropped it on a hard tile floor. Um, those two guys aren't friends anymore. Um, <laughs> it's got a quick brief description of the game. Um, <clears throat> giving you an idea of the game and the history. It's got a thing called the Tools of War. And first contact, Warzone Ramesses. <clears throat> um, mission briefings. A lot of this is bump, but when you get to this page, it's got rules and setup that will use these guys to allow you to set up your two models and have a little battle with them. It's got the base stats. You'll see those a lot. <clears throat> these stats won't have absolutely everything in them or absolutely you know, everything you can do but they will be upgraded you know every if they add a new rule or add something to the stats that isn't already in them they'll give you those as well um keep hold of these stats because it's something uh, it's sometimes fun to go back and play the old games <clears throat> and um you've got a little battle plan and a little thing you're going to do to help you learn the rules and that goes through a couple of pages <sighs> you probably won't want to keep this one because it's just, it's so, so simple, um, but you might. But certainly some of the older, older ones give you, um, give you a lot of tactical ideas and flexibility and things you can do that make the game very different. <clears throat> so that's pretty cool. You probably want to keep them because you can go back to them. And that's the first page. I'm thinking I should have a last page somewhere. Yep. Must have fallen off some of the stuff's fallen out already. As I said in the beginning of it, don't worry, it's supposed to do that. It sort of stays together as a magazine for a little while, but will, as, as you can see, bits of it will fall out. But again, that is specifically so that you can separate the little bit, separate the little bits off and store them in folders where they're easy to access. Right, next, and this is a bit a lot of people look forward to, we've got what's next? For the Imperium, you can see we've got a group of three Necron Warriors and Runal Brass and a paintbrush. Runal Brass is amazing. The starter brushes are actually really fantastic unless they do something silly. Um, you may find that this style brush has a uh, cheapy plastic handle, 
but I wouldn't. Yeah, if it's anything like the previous ones, the uh, the bristles will be of reasonable quality. Um, if you start using them with um, the Necrons, with the Runeworld brass, make sure you wash your brush thoroughly and try to make sure the brush doesn't get up into the uh, into the metal bit because that's how you ruin brushes and metallic paints are more harmful for brushes than normal paints. <clears throat> a little bit, not a massive amount. <clears throat> you just need you just need to make sure you maintain your brushes, particularly because you probably won't get another brush for a few issues and you want this brush to last until they give you a replacement. You also need to get McCrag Blue. We can see on both of these it says base, which means they're both going to be slightly thicker, which means you may need to wall them down. You may not. You may find it works perfectly from the tin. Tin? <sighs> from the pot. <clears throat> a thing worth doing is getting a palette. Um, now you can spend money on a palette or you can take a piece of plastic. Like for example, <clears throat> this piece of plastic here. This is actually worth keeping just due to its size. That's a great place to mix paints and keep your wall in there. <clears throat> keep a bit of tissue or a bit of sponge in there to throw your paints off afterwards. That makes a fantastic little easel. So don't necessarily throw it away because it gives you something <coughs> to mix your paint on. And you're gonna to wanna to take the paint out of the pot, mix it in small amounts so that you use it before it dries off and then go back to the pot and take more paint out. The reason for that is that you'll move your hand in, an, in a normal manner to say something or express yourself. You'll catch the top of the paint pot and you will paint your floor and your table and your clothes and other things. <clears throat> so don't throw this away. <clears throat> You're also getting, as I said, three Necrons and three, um, it looks like the Close Combat Intercessors. <clears throat> They're just fucking awesome. <clears throat> and those guys, <clears throat> so this is next week, this is the week after, and both those guys are gonna are going to work brilliantly to give you a little squad along with your leader to fight with. So that looks good. Okay, cool. I've gone on for nearly an hour. I will blather on. I do apologise. The next uh, next two episodes should be a little shorter. I hope you guys enjoyed that. If you did, uh, remember to like and subscribe. Um, I am hungry for followers. Um, I also have a Facebook page, a Twitter page, and a, an Instagram page. On which I post things fairly regularly, or at least semi regularly, and I am going to get back to doing that more now that I'm now that I'm um, recording videos again. So I hope you guys enjoy that. And one last thing, if you want to win one of these, um, subscribe and comment in uh, the comments below. And next week I will roll a dice and randomly pick somebody out and send this. Little, no, little lone Necron dude out to you because, yeah, I don't want it and I'd rather the model gets played with. Okay, I will see you guys next week when I reveal who's won this and there will be other prizes. Bye-bye, <laughs> guys. <laughs>